Hello, welcome once again to the Lagos Transportation Agenda, your most influential transportation show on television. This is the show where we track uh, topical issues as well as current and emerging trends in the dynamic and multi-dimensional world of transportation. My name is Austin Ian. Today on the show, we are looking at the infrastructure ecosystem in Lagos State, especially to do with roadworks and transportation on the roads, especially the work and operations of the Lagos State Public Works Corporation to discuss the issues, the challenges, and the progress that has been made on public works, especially during the administration of Governor Babajide Songwolu. I have with me in the studio Engineer Latif Shomide. Engineer Shomide is the general manager of the Lagos State Public Works Corporation, or LSPWC. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Engineer Shomide and I will be discussing challenges and progress in roadworks and repairs in Lagos State with focus on the operations of the Lagos State Public Works Corporation when the Lagos Transportation Agenda returns after this time out. Please stay with us. This is Lagos, the heartbeat of Nigeria, a city steeped in rich cultural heritage and now poised to become a global financial center. Oh, well, a lot may us show, and it's an opportunity for us to just depict what Lagos is all about. And it's only at an event like this, competing with other bigger cities and all the other nations, that you can get to tell your story. So it's storytelling time for us. In a historic moment, Lagos made its inaugural appearance at the renowned Lord Mayor Show in London, a testament to its growing economic prominence. Lagos is a big mega city on its own right now. It's the largest city in Africa. It's the biggest economy that is a sub-national in Africa. But we want to make it one of the international financial centers in the world. All we're trying to do is to be able to let the world know that Lagos is indeed ready for bigger business. Lagos isn't just open for business. It's a gateway to the future, embracing innovation and welcoming investors from around the globe. We invite the world to witness Lagos's dynamism, progress, and the myriad of opportunities available for transformative, groundbreaking projects. Lagos is indeed ready to take over the world in the financial space, you know, in the economic space, and to truly, really be able to tell both the Lagos, the Nigerian, and the African story, and be able to let other parts of the world know who we are, understand our culture, understand that we are the center of culture, entertainment, music, in the whole of Africa, and to also be able to, for to know um, what we have to give to the world. So the whole idea, right, is for us to be able to let the world, get them to know what is happening in Lagos. But GDP of Lagos is actually bigger than GDP of Kenya, it's bigger than Ghana, it's bigger than Rwanda, and it's bigger than Senegal. As a little sub-national, it's very big in how it stands, in how it sits, and it's all of that conversation that we think a lot of people need to know what is happening in Lagos, you know, and how we can use the Lagos story, you know, to sort of like tell the African story. Welcome back. It's the Lagos Transportation Agenda. And my guest, as I said in the intro, is Engineer Latif Shomide, General Manager of the Lagos State Public Works Corporation. Uh, let me uh, start by asking you to give us a brief overview of the mandate of your corporation. Thank you very much, brother. Lagos State Public Works Corporation is one of the parastatals in the States and it is under Lagos State Ministry of Works and Infrastructure. Infrastructure yeah. It was established in 19, 1980. Okay. 1980, you know, um, by the Lagos State uh, law. Um, then it was uh, Lagos State, uh, you know, yes. public, you know, works uh, management board okay. in 1980. Mm -hmm. So when uh, we had our former governor, Ashiwajibola Ahmed Tunumbu, in 1999, he changed the names to Lagos State uh, Public Bureau. Public. And 2003, it was changed to Lagos State Public Works Corporation. Okay. And that is what we're using at it today. Okay. The mandates of this uh, cooperation is to ensure that 
the all roads in the states are kept rideable all year round. Mm. It has to be, you know, portal free. Mm. That is exactly our mandate. In the areas of uh, construction of the roads, maintenance of the roads, you know, <clears throat> doing palliative measures on some of the, you know, mm. of our roads, and as well as some of the facilities of the government, mm. the inner road leading to facilities of the government. Yes. So just ensure that the existing roads in the state are kept rideable, mm. you know. So that is the mandate given to Lagos State Public School Corporation. Okay. Um, what are the key challenges that you have been facing, you know, and how are you able or what are you doing to surmount those challenges? Oh, thank you very much for that great question. Um, the challenges, a lot of challenges. If we look at all the start with, we start with the, you know, I mean, the cost of materials mm. that we're using to maintain these roads. Yes. They're so huge and enormous now. Mm. If let me let me take it off from you know, I mean a greater percentage of our roads are with asphalt. And since our mandate is to ensure that the existing roads are kept rideable. Yes. So a road that has been made of asphalt before will have to be repaired with asphalt. Yes. So that is more reason why we're having, you know, um plants all over the states. We have about three of these huge plants across the state we have one in badagri we have one in the motor we have another one in ojodubaja yes. the central place so these three um plants you know are to turn out asphalt mm. you know on daily basis you know to be able to um maintain these our roads now looking at the funds like i said yes for example when i when i came on board in february 2022 the cost of a uh, bitumen yes. in terms of the cost of bitumen, the pattern of bitumen was just about 400, 500,000. Right now, as I'm speaking with you, a ton of bitumen goes for over 1 million, mm -hmm. 1 million 350,000. You can wow. imagine. Yes. And if you want to work optimally, as far as the you know corporation is concerned, want to work optimally, we use about a truck of this bitumen in a day. Hmm. So you can imagine at this point, it is important for us to appreciate the administration of Mr. Babadide Olusara Sogolu and uh, you know Dr. Kadri Absad. The reason why I'm saying this is that, you know, at any point in time, if they are going to turn out asphalt to work up smartly in the day, but Lagos State Public Works Corporation, you know, spend huge amounts of money. Hmm. So fund is just you can imagine the corporation spending close to about a 60 to 70 million naira in a day. Because we have to, our impact is have to be felt all over the state. The cost of the material is so enormous. Mm. So that is the, the area of funds. Yeah. The attitude of our people, mm. as far as the state is concerned, mm. needs to, you know, to be changed. Yes. You know, in the sense that we need to take ownership of this infrastructure. Mm. The government infrastructure is your your property and my property. Exactly. In the sense that, fine. Look at some people, you know, dumping things in the, in, you know, in the drain and get a clot. By the time it gets clogged, the road is as good as the drainage system. Exactly. If the drainage system is bad, forget about the road. Mm, mm. You know, you know, asphalt. You know, asphalt is not is not in you know friend to the water. 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 So as as soon as water goes under the the asphalt, the road you know continues to get bad, yes. and yes. that is the problem. Really. We need to change the attitude of our people. You know, to ensure that. You know, the way we don't we don't we don't drop things in the in the in the in the drainage system. And furthermore, looking at the areas of the weather weather condition, as far as Lagos is concerned, Lagos is under you know below sea level, or at least at sea level. At sea level, <laughs> and you can imagine you know contact of moisture content you know with what we are putting on top. Yes. So we need to be on top of of these roads at all time yes, to ensure that we don't have anything to work done to ensure that we monitor these things to keep you know and so that we continue to maintain all this road all year round mm. you know in addition the issue the issue of like i said the you know need to take ownership vandalization of our of um road infrastructure yes you know when i was a, a minister of work some you know sometimes ago you look where we use the uh, cover slabs cover slabs for as work with for pedestrians yes you see some you know some i mean some people going around there to break this you know cover slabs they break this work you know cover slabs to remove the the reinforcement inside mm. and this cover slab is meant you know to to serve as walkways for 
both you know for me and you mm, mm. and by the time we have some set of people going there break this you know i mean cover slabs because they want to remove the the reinforcement there yeah. you can imagine yes it's the money and my money so it is important at this point for me to, to let people understand that to god who made me there is need for all of us to ensure that we change the attitude by maintaining and uh, taking ownership of the government's infrastructure. Thank you so much, uh, Engineer Shomide. Yes. Um, we'll be back with more uh, questions for Engineer Shomide uh, on the program uh, after this time out. Please stay with us. This is Lagos, the heartbeat of Nigeria, a city steeped in rich cultural heritage and now poised to become a global financial center. Well, a lot may us show, and it's an opportunity for us to just depict what Lagos is all about. And it's only at an event like this, competing with other bigger cities and other nations, that you can get to tell your story. So it's storytelling time for us. In a historic moment, Lagos made its inaugural appearance at the renowned Lord Mayor Show in London, a testament to its growing economic prominence. Lagos is a big mega city on its own right now. It's the largest city in Africa. It's the biggest economy that is a sub-national in Africa. But we want to make it one of the international financial centers in the world. All we're trying to do is to be able to let the world know that Lagos is indeed ready for bigger business. Lagos isn't just open for business. It's a gateway to the future, embracing innovation and welcoming investors from around the globe. We invite the world to witness Lagos's dynamism, progress, and the myriad of opportunities available for transformative, groundbreaking projects. Lagos is indeed ready to take over the world in the financial space, you know, in the economic space, and to truly really be able to tell both the Lagos, the Nigerian, and the African story, and be able to let other parts of the world know who we are, understand our culture, understand that we are the center of culture, entertainment, music, in the whole of Africa, and to also be able to, for people to know um, what we have to give to the world. So the whole idea, right, is for us to be able to let the world, get them to know what is happening in Lagos. But GDP of Lagos is actually bigger than the GDP of Kenya, it's bigger than Ghana, it's bigger than Rwanda, and it's bigger than Senegal. As a little sub-national, it's very big in how it stands, in how it sits, and it's all of that conversation that we think a lot of people need to know what is happening in Lagos, you know, and how we can use the Lagos story, you know, to sort of like tell the African story. If you are just joining, is the Lagos Transportation Agenda. My guest today is engineer Latif Shomi, the general manager of the Lagos State Public Works Corporation. We'll be discussing the challenges and progress that has been made uh, in public works infrastructure in Lagos State. Let's uh, talk about the progress that has been made. You know, I mean, the, the governor, the current governor has put transportation and traffic management at the very top of his scale of priorities in the, uh, as, uh, concerning the team's agenda. So uh, what would you say are the key highlights of the progress that has been made, the achievements of this administration oh. in public works and infrastructure. Oh, the, 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 it's, been, it's been tremendous. It's been tremendous in the sense that, you know, if you look at the state, is, the state is surrounded by water. Mm. And there, there is this policy on, you know, integrated intermodal transportation system. Yes. On the need to annex, you know, resources in the area of road, rail and water so that is more reason why why road is so key mm. because all this all this you know um the transportation system we're talking about you will have to ride there you get on the road before you get there Fair, yes, exactly you want to go to the ferry terminals you need to get to the you know you will you, you will have to you know ride on the road yeah, before you get there exactly. you want to get to the real, real uh, you know terminal, terminal. Mm -hmm. you have to ride on the oh, road before you get there recently you will see the 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 the, 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 the you know the efforts of the mr governor in the area of these uh, bridges that bond the commission yes there was one commission at yaba yes you know that overpass there's another one you know commissioned at Ohibo, you know and it's still going and it's going 
and the issue of uh, blue line has been commissioned the red line very soon by the grace of god mm -hmm. it will be commissioned so look at the area of uh, you know terminals we have some of the beautiful terminals look at the pakodo terminal in the Kurudu, mm -hmm. look at the one at Osborne, mm -hmm. you know, at, um, I mean, around the Etiosa there. Mm -hmm. So for us to be, for example, if you say you want to go from a Kurudu by road, you understand me, from a Kurudu by road to Etiosa, it takes you about three hours. Mm -hmm. But then speaking, you want to go by water, just take you about 30 minutes from a Kurudu. Yes. So you can imagine the, the, the time that, that has been shortened. Exactly. The, the productivity. You know, I mean, in terms of in what terms people have made, yes, man hour loss, mm -hmm. all this. Whole, mm -hmm. So, and the same thing happened to the, the, the rail line. Mm -hmm. You can imagine for the one the governor has commissioned. So, and there is no hold up on the rail line. Exactly. So you can imagine, we need to harness all this. That's why we said integrated intermodal transportation system mm -hmm. on the need for us to ensure that the three, you know, systems are linked together. Exactly. We're very frank, we need to give it to, you know, Mr. Governor and Mr. Deputy Governor in this regard. Exactly. Only that, you know, they, there is need for us to ensure that we support them by paying our taxes mm -hmm. and ensure that we have money to do all this. Exactly. So that is just that. Government have been so, 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 so magnanimous in that regard to be able to, but we still need to do more. Exactly. Because we still need to do more. I mean, because Uma wants would never be satisfied. <laughs> exactly. We need to do more in that regard. Mm -hmm. But we need to say thank you to Mr. Governor in this yeah. regard. Thank you very much. Thank you to Mr. Governor. Yeah. Uh, also, let, I will talk about synergy between your corporation and others within the, I mean, the MDAs, ministries, department across Lagos State. You, in the first part of the, our interview, you talked about the challenges. Yeah. I am concerned about trying to mitigate those challenges, especially in the area of people vandalizing and, uh, you know, misusing the road. What synergy do you have with others, other MDAs, whose job is to make sure that people do not do those things, that there are consequences when people do those things? What synergy do you have generally with those whose job is to ensure those things? Thank you so much for that question. Generally speaking, the first um agency that we will talk with or the what first md i will talk with that we have very wonderful synergy is the office of drainage system because there's no way i'm going to do anything without office of drainage system okay in the sense that like i said the other time i said the road is as good as the drainage system exactly so in addition there's something that's you know very very important that i need to mention yeah the you know office of drainage services have en enforcement uh -huh. enforcement we don't have enforcement in public works cooperation mm -hmm. so it is you know because they have enf enforcement let me give you an you know example there is this a uh, particular section on ogunisi road sometimes ago i was just coming we find out that you know there's this particular um building that are carrying out some some construction work out there mm. so the the driving out there you know had been demolished so the instead of getting this driving uh, constructed they didn't do that they just you know put sa sharp sand there and seal it up so when water that that's supposed to move inside the drain mm. was blocked but then so everything just you know i mean spilled over on the road yes as well we saw it and our people before you know it in the you know it has spoiled that road mm. we had to call on ods Office, they Office came Office. there with their you know um with their security apparatus they came on board and you know sealed that particular before you know it before i got there again they have already you know done the removal of that seals and the whole then i had to come on board and then seal the road before you know that particular road is there standing we don't have any so it is important if i don't if public works corporation as a corporation is not working with them we're just doing ourselves exactly. it is important for all of us to work together the same thing with other agencies you know, for example, look at Minister of Works. Yes, sir. That's why we are under Minister of Works. We work together. Mm -hmm. You understand? We have some rules that are beyond us. Mm -hmm. In some cases, you know, I mean, because the existing rules are supposed to keep the rule. But some rules, people will be asking a road that does not have drainage system. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have a road and there is no drainage system, it is advisable for you not to put asphalt. If you put asphalt, it's just putting, you know, I mean, sending money into the drain. It exactly. doesn't make any sense. So we will liaise with the Minister of Works in this regard. They are saddled with the responsibility of the construction of new roads. Mm. So they come on board, you know, couple, they will come on board and get out. So 
this synergy is always there what about the private sector in what ways are you seeing a, a synergy between the government uh, bodies just as yourself and the private sector in the maintenance of uh, infrastructure in the United States. Briefly. Thank you very much. It is important, you know, I'm so happy that uh, you are bringing up this, you know, kind of question. It is very, you know, I would be so glad if Lagosians, the philanthropists, the, the, the organizations are coming on board to partner with Lagos State Government in this regard because mm. the cost of, you know, carrying out road repairs now is so huge. Mm. So if they can come on board, we'll be so glad. In the area of construction of roads, yes. when I was the Minister of Works, we have a program that we call Public Infrastructure Improvement Partnership Program, mm -hmm. PIIP. It is this program that worked with, the, you know, on um, Ajosa Adogun. Yes, sir. Ajosa Adogun was, you know, was uh, financed by Zenith Bank then. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we, Lagos State Government, supervised the project. And look at that that particular road is there standing. Mm -hmm. The same thing happened. Look at Ade Toko Bademola uh, yeah. in Victoria Island. Mm -hmm. It was financed by Lagos State Government and Eco Hotel. We have series of them exactly. in the areas of construction, reconstruction of road, new roads mm -hmm. in this guy. But if they can come on board in the areas of maintenance of road, we will Lagos State Government we, they put a lot of things in place to ensure that a uh, kind of like is in place to be able to see to have value for their money. You know, like uh, I could still remember, I just had a by Zenith Bank. They have this advertisement rights in that stretch of the yes, road. Yes, if I you go there now, I just had a uh, me. I mean, you could, um, Zenith Bank has started it to illuminate that road for December. Yes. If you go there, it's a very wonderful road. Lovely, they yes. take ownership. Mm. They do the, you know, the, the drainage system, they clear the drainage system, they do lane markings. It's, that road is as if was just done yesterday yes because they take ownership exactly and they could see the value for money before they see a small hole you know portal like this they come on board and get it done that particular road is there standing mm -hmm. we need to talk you know our people need to change their mindset come to around public. and have synergy with the government in this regard one thing i want to tell you at this point is that government is so transparent in this time government will because it's a government road mm -hmm. government will help in designing that road you know to suit the people because if I, we ask you to go and design the road you will design the road to just suit you exactly. as an individual mm. or as an entity but we, this road is going to serve me and you we have to look at things globally exactly it's designed for for the organizations or the philanthropies and then they will expect if you are going to if you, if you have to finance the whole thing they will expect you to use your contractor okay government will not impose contractors on you Hmm. So to show some level of transparency in this regard, yes. But what government will ensure that the standard and specifications of government is totally adhered with. Exactly. The quality control and quality assurances are, special, you know, adhered to, you know, and they are going to be free hmm. in this regard because this is what we are being paid for to yes. do. But government will, you know, allow you to use your contractor to show some level of transparency and all the, this kind of a thing. So that is just. Yeah, it's been working, but we need people to still come on board in this regard. Right. Well said. Yes. Engineer Latif Shomide, General Manager, Lagos State Public Works Corporation. Thank you so much it's for it's your very happy. lively and energetic uh, expo. You were very passionate about your no, job. I, I can I mean, see that. This is the job I do. <laughs> then, you know, since I've been a young you know, engineer, I've been on roads and bridges. Wonderful. Thank Wonderful. you very much. It's we thank you having. for your uh, for your uh, time. Thank you uh, very taking much. time to talk with us, and I thank you also, uh, dear viewer, for uh, being with us up to the end of this program. I hope you join me next week at this time on this same station for yet another interesting discourse on transportation in Lagos State, Nigeria, and beyond on the Lagos Transportation Agenda. To then, this is Austin Ian, your host, saying, take care of yourself, take care of others, stay safe. Bye bye.